hello there and welcome back to my channel so today i'm bringing you a sequel so around a week ago i tried out you can be's abstraction palette for the very first time and if you watch that video you will remember maybe or if you're like me you forget things that happened like 10 minutes ago but during the video, I was getting like increasingly frustrated with wasn't the blendability of the eyeshadows because they were all blending beautifully. It was the lack of pigment and I was just finding that it was taking ages and ages and ages to actually like get the shadows to have any pigment to them. So I was getting really, really frustrated as the video went on. I was also anxious because I was thinking that the lighting wasn't good, but that was just a figment of my imagination because everything looked fine and it was actually some of my best lighting ever so yeah there was just a few different issues that was sending me spiraling out of control and by the end of the video I just felt like I'd had the life drained out of me that was partly due to the palette but also partly due to my own neur neuroticism honestly later on after I'd filmed the video I'd, and I was looking through the photos of the eye look I created I actually realized how much I actually love the the eye look like I, I actually love the finished result and it was definitely a case of the journey was hideous long and very frustrating but the destination was kind of worth it. You can be your beloved brand to me and that doesn't mean that I'm not going to I'm not going to say if I don't like their products. Like I've given them negative reviews before and I'm sure that I probably will do again in the future. But one of the things that I love about You Can Be more than any other brand is that they can take a constructive criticism so well. And actually, I I'd planned anyway that I was going to revisit this palette, but a couple of days ago, I got a email from You Can Be and it was the sweetest email and I think all the other brands in the world should take note of You Can Be's outlook to reviews because if I loved You Can Be before that email, I mean I love them a million times more after the email. So I'm just going to read you out the email now and just to say though this the email is not what swayed me to want to revisit the palette. I pretty much made that decision before I'd even put the video up, honestly, as, as you will have seen, because I had a little bit of an outpouring of my inner dialogue at the end of the video. Okay, so the email from you can be said, Hello, Anwen, we viewed your video, and then they've linked to the video. Don't worry, I'm happy to hear your honest opinion. We don't mind if you share your opinions with your fans either. Everyone loves your authenticity and bravery to speak up. We need genuine friends like you. Ah, oh, well, I need genuine friends like you too, you can be, don't we all? You don't need to feel pressured to keep being yourself. We are constantly trying to improve our eyeshadow palettes true and truly want to improve with you and are looking forward to your next video. The attached pictures are what I have recorded. If you have something that is not stated in the video, please email and let me know. Love you, wish you all the best. So the picture that they're referencing is this one, so they've, I'll probably just insert the picture because like the the picture that I've taken with this phone of my, the picture on my other phone is super dodgy. So they've taken a picture of the palette and they've put squares around the shades that I used in my last video. They're wanting to just confirm that those were definitely the shades and they've not missed any out because I think they're gonna try maybe to investigate maybe why they didn't work so well. I, I'm really hoping that it wasn't just because my lighting didn't look good and I was just getting very anxious and stressed. I don't know guys, but do you know what? You can be a brand that deserves our respect and it will always, always remain super close to my heart because they are what every brand should be. They're not gonna cut you off if you give an honest review of their products and maybe it's not so great. They're gonna accept your constructive criticism and they're going to want to grow and learn from it and improve their products next time and that's just another reason why I feel super proud that I have my collaboration eyeshadow palette with you can be because there's no other brand that I would want my name attached to it more than a brand that has integrity 
and respect for their fans. So anyway, guys, with all of that being said, I am going to create another eye look today. I'm thinking that I'm going to go green, but I'm just going to be playing it by ear as always. So I've done all the rest of my makeup. I'm literally ready to rock and roll. So I'm just going to dive right in. Also, I did just want to mention as well that the last palette by You Can Be that I tried prior to trying the abstraction eyeshadow palette was the 4c palette which oh my gosh like the the quality of those eyeshadows was outstanding like outstanding and i don't know if that's maybe another factor in in why i had such mega high expectations just because the last palette i tried by them had been one of the very best i'd e ever tried by them i think i'm going to go into this shade here it's it's a beautiful kind of true green i'm just going to be popping this all up in my crease oh guys just to mention as well i'm so happy i finally got a nose ring back i've been trying to take out my nose stud for ages I could not get it to come out and then yesterday I was washing my face and the nose stud just literally snapped in half. It was a wonderful moment. I was so happy about it. Okay, so I'm just packing on this green shade. I would definitely say it's looking beautiful. Like it's very bright and vibrant. I think I'm definitely going to be able to build this one up. Honestly, guys, like I'm not one of these people that demands that every single eyeshadow needs to be super pigmented. If anything, I actually prefer it when shadows aren't super pigmented because I, I actually like to build up my look because I think the more pigmented the eyeshadow, the easier it is to kind of make a mistake because if you end up putting it on but you don't really like it, there's not much you can do to kind of cover it or correct it so i think it's one of the big misconceptions about the makeup world or well not really misconceptions well it is a misconception that you know if a shadow isn't pigmented it means it's no good i think it's just this kind of myth that's been perpetrated around the beauty community that we need pigmentation for a shadow to be considered good it's kind of like you know for guys you know it's not how big it is it's how you use it and i think we all know that's a lie so okay so so far i'm actually really 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 happy with this shade i think it's looking absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful and keep in mind i've only applied this one shadow here like just one but i'm loving the way around my actual crease it's looking like an emerald shade and then it's kind of blended out to look a lot lighter oh my gosh guys i'm really liking this this has definitely got off to a very positive start what was i going to say as well there was something i was thinking of saying but i forgot probably wasn't that important anyway honestly guys oh my gosh so i've just started to watch the uk uh drag race and oh my gosh guys like oh my gosh they have no budget no budget i don't know if you've seen it yet but the winners of each episode win a badge they win like a pin badge and at first i thought it was like they were joking but no the winner of the episode wins a pin badge it, like on the american version the winner of the episode wins like $5,000 or like an all expense paid trip to Paris or somewhere beautiful. I, I mean, there's just no budget and I kind of feel really sorry for the UK drag queens. Everyone's going to be comparing it to the American one. You know, some people may not realise that there's no budget and they may just think that UK drag queens are shit. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, the drag queens were great. I really like the drag queens, but it's obvious that there's just no budget that's been put into the show whatsoever. So that, that's a bit sad, but I'm I'm still enjoying it. I, I always will enjoy it. Okay, so I am very impressed with this shadow, and I feel like we got here really, really, really fast. Also, you'll be so pleased to know I'm really happy with the lighting that I've got going on today. Okay, so next we are going to... Oh, gosh, do you know what? I'm really tempted to go in with, like, there's some really beautiful kind of... Like, like this deeper, greeny kind of shade, but I want to keep it kind of light and bright. 
So, oh, and look at that teal shade. Oh, there's some absolutely stunning shades in here. Okay, so guys, next I'm going to go in with this lime green and I'm just going to be using that to blend out the edges and I'm going to take it all the way up to my brow. So on the day that I filmed the first review, it was a rare kind of weather day here in in Manchester. It was extremely sunny and bright and I think that's why in my kind of viewfinder it looked dark and I was just getting really frustrated because I only have two days a week when I can generally film a video and I was thinking oh my gosh like not only is this palette not very it's not working with me kind of thing I was getting extra anxious because I just felt like no one would be able to see what I was doing anyway. I take making videos very seriously and if something doesn't go the way I want it to go, I do get incredibly stressed because I feel like if this, say, were my full-time job, I, I would probably not get as anxious because I would think, well, do you know what? It's fine. I can just refilm this tomorrow. But because I only have two days a week, to film like when i sit down and film that time is so precious so i just think i've got myself all worked up by the way i'm loving this shade oh my gosh look at that and i'm loving how that shade has kind of worked into the green and it, it's do you know what i feel like we've got the opposite situation to the first video here in that in the first video i applied like four or five shades and it, you could only really see one shade on my lid whereas I've applied two shades and I feel like it looks like I've applied maybe four or five. So I feel like we've kind of got the reverse situation going on today, which is fun. Oh my gosh, right, so I really, really like this shade. I thought it was gonna be more of like a lime green, but it actually has more of like a yellow look on the lid, kind of blended out. Do you know what? I think I'm gonna take that beautiful shade and like, bring it to highlight my inner corner. Ah! Oh, guys, you know what? I've done like a 360 on this palette. Oh, is it actually a 360 or 180? What do people say? I never know, and I, then I was just wing it. But I think it's a 180, isn't it? Because 180 would mean if you're there, you would end up there, whereas a 360 would mean you've just gone all the way around and then you've back to where you started. So yeah, I think it's a 180. I am really enjoying the shades that I've used so far. Maybe I might go in with a little bit of this shade here, just to add a little bit of extra green, a slightly different green. Should I put that one under the eye here? Okay, so... I'll pop it over here. Okay, so I think I'm just going to bring that shade into here a little bit. Okay, so I like that green, but I wouldn't really say it's any different really to the first green that I popped on. So I'm not really going to do anything else with that. I'm going to go into this shade here, which is more of like a turquoise or Actually, it's more of like a teal, although I don't really know the difference between turquoise and teal. But I love teal. It's one of my favourite colours. Pop that on the outer V. And I'm just going to bring that into my crease. Oh, yes! Really love that. I can definitely see that there's a big difference between this teal shade and that first green we put on the lid. Can you see that? So today I'm actually loving this palette for all the same reasons why I didn't really like it the first time I tried it. Look at that! Oh my gosh, this is like a green lover's fantasy. I'm going to take that off, not that it was doing anything anyway, it was hanging on for dear life. I think I'll do a cut crease just because if I didn't, is this even my channel anymore? I don't know. And then I'm going to go under my eye and I'm going to go in with a mix of 
the first green that we used and then the beautiful teal and then I'm gonna pop a little bit of the lime greeny slash yellow shade just to blend it out so that we've got a kind of correlation between the bottom and the top you know what? I'm actually loving how this this kind of lime green it, it looks kind of neon like it's so bright and it's really making like everything pop I'm adding it like lower down and I'm just loving how it's kind of framed the eye. Okay, so I've created the cut crease and next I am going to pop a little bit of the... Oh, that's a tough choice. Oh, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I am, I'm feeling overwhelmed here. Oh gosh. The teal on the outer part of my lid and then on the inner part I'm going to go in with this beautiful beautiful green okay so we're going to just pack on the teal in this outer area and I'm going to use that to blend the concealer into the lid so on the inner part I'm going to go in with my finger I'm going to dip it into the green. <gasps> ah, it's the most beautiful, beautiful kind of chantreuse shade. And I love a chantreuse. Oh my gosh. Okay, so guys, so beautiful. I would say that this is the kind of metallic version of the yellowy um, kind of lime green that we've used a couple of times. It's absolutely popping. Just look at that. It is a popping. Oh, yes, she is. Okay, wonderful. I'm gonna go over to the other side with the tail. Do you know what I've decided as well? Because I love this kind of chantreuse shade so much. I'm gonna actually take that throughout the entire lid because I'm not quite sure why I decided to do the half cut crease today. Like, I don't know why. Why did I do that? At least we've got to like test out the mat again, but take the chantreuse all the way across the lid. This palette has definitely been vindicated for me today. And I'm still saying that, you know, those kind of lavender, like, you know, the light purpley shades that I used last time, I still hold firm that they were, they weren't pigmented. They weren't that buildable because it just took far too long. Like there's a limit. You've got shadows that are nicely buildable and it's a nice time because you maybe have to dip in a, two or three times, but then you've got shadows that are, buildable and taking the piss where you expected to dig in like six plus times so yeah I still stand by my feedback for those shadows but I definitely think this palette has a lot more to offer than okay so I'm really really liking what we've got going on here I just think everything looks so bright and fresh and kind of organic I didn't used to be the biggest lover of greens on, on my eyes, but I have slowly just become really into them. I think I was always a bit intimidated of green around the eyes, but um, yeah, I'm just falling more and more in love with it. So I feel like it's only appropriate to go in with my lime green eyeliner today on my waterline. This is by Barry M. It's, oh, it's in need of being sharpened, which is a bright pain in the vagina because I don't know if I have a pencil sharpener. Oh, I do have a pencil sharpener. <gasps> this is a good day, but I don't have anything to sharpen it into. So I'm going to quickly drink my green tea and I'm going to sharpen my eyeliner into my cup because that's the kind of skanky girl I am, honestly. Don't tell me you've never done it. I know you have. I know. I know, I could just walk into the bathroom and use my bin in the bathroom, but 
Mm, no, that just would not be me. Okay, so we now have an extremely sharp eyeliner. And you know what? I I didn't end up sharpening it to my cup. I ended up just sharpening it straight onto my makeup table. Okay, so I mean, it's not actually made the biggest amount of difference, but I think it's my whole eye is green anyway. This one, it's, yeah, it didn't, didn't really stand out as much as I thought it may, but that's fine. I should probably have gone in with black actually in, in retrospect, but anyway, so I'm going to just finish off. I'm going to do my lips and mascara, and then I'll be back to just give you my final thoughts. So I'll be one sec. Okay, so I've applied the mascara. I've applied a banging red lip. I, I wasn't really sure to go with the red or not, but I'm actually really, really pleased that I did. Oh, hello. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. To eat on his finger. And we're just in the A&E department now, and there's no one here. There's a nurse. So I'm actually really, really pleased that I decided to revisit this palette and give it a second chance because I am super happy with how this look turned out. I just think it looks so bright, so popping, just so green, but I love it. I definitely enjoyed each and every one of the shadows that I tried today. So after revisiting this palette today, I would definitely say that it, my conclusion is that there's 76 shades within this palette. Some of them are not going to be the best, whereas others are going to be really, really good. I think, you know, it costs £10. I'd say if only, you know, I'd say if only like not even 50%, if less than that were good, that it would be worth the £10. So obviously I, I've not tried them all. I can't really categorically say how many are good and how many are, are not. But what I can tell you is that I've been really, really impressed with the greens today. I will continue to use this palette over the next couple of weeks. And if I've got any other updates, I will let you know. But I feel like... I definitely accept some of the blame for the, I don't know, not blame, but I feel like I was definitely, definitely having a bad day the first time I tried this palette and I was a lot sassier than I usually am. So I think I did give it a very rough ride, but that being said, I definitely think that the shadows that I did pick last time were tough to build up. So I stand by that, but I'm not, I, I think the palette would be worth a go if you like the shades of which there are many. So I just wanna end the video uh, by saying thank you to You Can Be for being such a brilliant brand, a brand that I feel other brands should look up to. You're really setting the makeup stage for being a place where feedback, glowing or bashing is taken the way it should be taken and used to ultimately improve your products and, you know, keep your fans happy so thank you so much to you can be and um, anyway guys i really really hope that you've enjoyed this video today thank you so much for your patience and i would be really really keen to hear what your thoughts are downstairs if you could let me know in the comments what you thought of these shadows how you felt they performed from what you saw i would really appreciate that and um, anyway i'm gonna go thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one